interesting notable talks presented by Anytech Trial and we have with us Emily Tippins who is the Chief Marketing Officer at Aventra. Hello Emily. Hello Mahek, nice to meet you. How are you doing today? I am doing great. So can you tell us more about Aventra first? So yeah, we can of have course. More yeah, absolutely. So Avantra is really interesting actually because um, really what we do is we help companies um, that use SAP as their kind of mission critical systems to get product or whatever it is out into consumers' hands. And so what we do is we help to automate some of those operational tasks. Um, and we take in all the data from SAP, we allow people to see it on a dashboard, and then we also automate some of the system patches and uh, routine tasks that need to be done by um, basis engineers effectively. So it really is about helping to support businesses to deliver for the global economy by helping them to unlock innovation and also to support the well-being of their of their engineers. They're very important engineers in their business because we don't want them up at three o'clock in the night dealing with system alerts and, and false alarms. So um, that's what we're here to do is to try and automate some of those things for them. Well, that gives a certain amount of clarity on what Aventra really is, Emily. So starting with our questionnaires, Emily, see, you know, with the global pandemic, which started in 2020, all these marketeers had to literally push themselves to evolve and literally force themselves to hold on to the marketing strategy, uh, strategies, B2B marketing strategies rather, to give the, themselves and their brands a push mm. in this quickly changing um, online world. You know, yeah. and now after having to push themselves and uh, to stack themselves onto one specific B2B operation and trends, Emily, what do you think is the most exciting B2B marketing trend at the moment? How can one use it to increase brand awareness? Mm, yeah, great question. And I totally agree. It's been really tough for marketers over the last couple of years. You know, I think budgets have been squeezed. Um, customers are harder to get conversations with and so marketers have to be really savvy with how they use their budget and also of course putting lots of it online you know I think one of the one of the key changes was that we couldn't go to physical events anymore so a lot of people relied on lead generation and generating MQLs from going to physical events and so, you know, one of the trends that we leapt on very quickly was actually becoming our own event host. Um, so actually we looked into, um, you know, the, the, the right event platforms that are out there for us to actually produce our own content and reach the people that we needed to without physically traveling to those places. Um, and it really did support our demand generation activities and allowed us to really get our brand into a market. You know, we're, we're a young brand, although our product has been going for 20 plus years, the brand is young and it really needed to get out there in the market. And one of the ways we could do that was um, jump onto the back of an established event platform and really get into their, their, um, their channel feeds. So, you know, the, the content that we were producing was the right kind of content. It answered people's questions and the pains that they were going through around digital transformation and cloud migration and we could really tap into the platform's algorithms that they have their own algorithm which curates content to the audience that is going to be interested in your in your webinars so that's one of the things that we did and we were producing a lot of content there um, and it was low cost, you know, it wasn't really that expensive to subscribe to the to the platform. The cost comes in the time it takes to produce the content. And you've got to make sure your content's valuable and, and relevant to people. Um, but I think one of the other trends that we latched onto there was around co-creation with other partners. So other brands that you can ride the coattails of. So for us, we're lucky that we've got some, some nice partnerships with, you know, some of the hyperscalers like Google Cloud and AWS but also some other partners like Red Hat who are really exciting in the kind of DevOps space. So being able to produce content with them and then publishing it on this event platform meant that we could effectively access their audiences as well, plus 
other people who weren't in their kind of ecosystem that were just interested in the topic. So I think for us, that was something that was massively beneficial in a time when we were, you know, our budgets were tight and we couldn't access people in the same traditional way. And I think in terms of the ongoing evolution of that trend, it's got to be around the metaverse, right? I'm sure you've you've chatted to many people um, recently about the metaverse. It's the latest thing, yeah. it's this marketing trend. Um, but actually, I think, you know, rather than just kind of getting that magpie syndrome when you're like, oh, there's that new thing over there. Let's, you know, we must investigate that. Yeah, absolutely investigate it. But make sure that you can understand how to use it to be authentic for your B2B brand. And I think for us, certainly, the evolution of the event community space and bringing that to a kind of virtual world is something that we will be developing next year. Um, you know, we, we, we've run a couple of really big community summits this last year virtually. Um, and one of the platforms we've been using for that is really key about um, allowing people to lean in and participate even though they're sitting remotely at home. They need the space to be able to communicate with their peers and interact with their colleagues. And really that's what we've been able to do. But I think to push it to that, that next level, it's about seeing how we can bring that virtual AI and um, AR world to enhance that experience. So it feels like we're all together in the same room. All right, Emily, those were some key experiences, personal experiences rather, which you shared with us and your viewers and some key valuable insights as well as well as suggestions what motivates you for your role here at Aventra you know as a role of a chief marketing officer yeah good question I think for me it's really been about um, being able to build a team um, from the ground up you know as I said we are a small team but what we've done really is focus on getting the basics right and the basic marketing principles which you know, shouldn't be ignored. So yes, we have all this new exciting tech around, but let's make sure we use it by making sure it's cemented in our marketing principles that we've all trained in, but, you know, making sure that we understand, for example, I mentioned personas, you know, have you got your personas clearly defined and actually just sales understand them? Um, because it's one thing if you have them defined and it's just something that marketing keep in their back pocket, but if your salespeople don't recognize them and don't really understand how it can help them in their conversations, it's it's pointless really. So I think for me, building up that team based around marketing principles, putting in a solid strategy, using tactical pillars, that then roll up to that strategy. That's been really, really rewarding. And it's 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 something that I've been able to see the results of in real time almost. Um, you know, we're very lucky to have lots of data at our fingertips these days as marketers. And it's been great to see that, you know, the fruits of our labor are reflected in our marketing reports that we deliver to the business every month. So yeah, and, and I think also just the fact that, you know, I work for a company that really is supporting well-being at work. You know, one of the, the reasons why we have the tool that we've built is so that people can um, reduce the mundane tasks that they're doing, reduce the stress levels, actually get back some life. You know, it's not just all about work, especially yeah. in these times, you know, it's about spending time with family and friends. So it's really about helping people to be productive in the best way. And that's really rewarding. See, Aventra itself being a lead AI-based automation application, we would be keen to learn from you that as a marketer, how do you leverage AI for meeting your objectives at work? Yeah, it wouldn't be right, would it, if I was working for an automation company and then I wasn't using it myself <laughs> with my team. So, yeah, absolutely right. We we found that, you know, really the key for us in terms of when automation is relevant is when it can save you time. Um, you know, there's no point using automation if all it does is create havoc or make things more confusing. So what we've been doing is we use it to actually run the whole top of funnel program. Um, so our inbound marketing efforts with regard to getting people into the website and then nurturing them through until they're ready to actually speak to somebody about our product. And that's something that we do through our uh, marketing platform. It's all automated. We have several different scenarios that we do by persona. So we're very, um, clear about which personas we want to talk to and then the sort of nurture path we want them to go on and that's all automated and it saves you know it saves somebody manually sitting there um engaging with people when they're not actually ready to buy 
you know you want to focus the effort your manual effort and your you know the intelligence of your really key people to speak to people when they're at that point where they raise their hand and they say yes i'm ready to buy i want to have a conversation um, and I think some of the other areas that we use automation that's really interesting as well is, and I'm sure lots of people are doing this as well, but um, it's really important to keep using, um, you know, things like uh, smart rules and, and predictive text on your websites and in your emails so that, you know, rather than creating in the past, we may have created 20 different emails. Actually, you can create one email, but you can tailor it with smart rules around, well, this section only needs to be shown to this persona and this section only needs to be shown to people who have, for example, um, this job title or are in this vertical. And I think it's being savvy about how you can save time and use automation to your advantage. Um, and just one other point I would mention there around automation that we found really useful, because we're a global brand. Uh, we have a very small, agile, but very smart marketing team, um, but we are global. So quite often uh, translation is part of what we need to do. So we have a global strategy, but we need to translate that so it's relevant for regional markets. And actually using an AI tool to translate our content has been really valuable because it saves so much time. And then my marketers can spend their time doing things that they're really yeah. good at, really valuable, as opposed to simply translating content. So that AI tool does a pretty decent job of translating the content. And then all we need to do is, you know, give it a human eye and make sure it is actually valid. So that's a really great innovation that's happened, I think, in, in marketing recently, are these really cool AI tools for translation. As per you, what are the key skills a uh, budding marketer should work on to become future ready in such such a fast paced ecosystem? Yeah, I I really I know it sounds a bit boring and a bit dull, but I really would say to make sure you go back to your marketing principles. You know, as I said before, we all learnt them, you know, when we were coming up through the ranks but they are so important to make sure you go back to um, especially when we've got all these new exciting things coming at us every you know the, the pace is so fast everything's changing you know Google changed its algorithm every five minutes um, you know there's, there's new things coming out on the market every five minutes new tools for us to try but if we're not really solid in why we're doing what we're doing and what our marketing strategy is and how our brand should be represented in the market then we can't make the right decisions and I think, you know, I've, I've seen it before and I've I've been a bit of a magpie in my past. I'm like, oh, look, new toy, oh, a oh, new thing over there. But actually, you almost need to rein yourself back in and go, OK, how can I use this? And does it fit with our brand? Does it make us more it does it make us easier to understand and i think that's something that people often forget is that you know it's not just about being cool and trendy it's about actually how does it help your customers to understand what you do better so i, I would really recommend that people don't you know shy away from going back to those marketing principles you know i i keep a copy of my uh, i've got my brand strategy journal on my desk and I make sure that I, you know, I don't know everything and everything changes so quickly that, you know, I think it's really important to look at other people's perspectives, read about what other people are doing in other businesses. And I think, you know, you guys doing your notable talks, so fantastic for getting that perspective from other people because we can all learn from everyone else. So you suggest going back to basics every time? Every time. Don't forget the basics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good advice, good advice. What should be the top priorities for a growth-based B2B SaaS startup for laying down its strong foundations at Marketing Prep? So I think you've got to start with um, brand. I think you need to understand who you are as a business. And, you know, if, if you are working in a startup, you're usually the sole marketer. So get under the skin of either the founders or the owners or the CEO to find out from them what their vision is for the company. Because if you can start with vision, your mission and your value proposition, then that's how you're going to be able to really grow your brand from the ground up. Um, so I think having a clear, unique value statement, and I think there are some great books there on the market to help you with that. One of them is um, from Martin Numier. Um, I mean, if you just Google Martin Numier and the only, um, onlyness statement, 
then you'll find you know example of how to say that you are the only company that does xyz for these these people and that's really the heart of getting to understand what you're about because you know as marketers we can be tempted to put a lot of fluff onto things we want it to sound creative but Ultimately, you know, we, we need to be really clear and have clarity in who we are as a business and why we exist so that then we can build a story on top of that. So I think, you know, those are really the, the, the foundations of what you want to do as a marketer when you're building from the ground up. And then from there, you can, you can grow and you can, as I've said before, you can build out your personas. These are really vital because you can't be all things to everyone. You need to really understand who your buyer personas are. So not just everybody that could ever buy from you but who do you want to buy from you and who do you want to speak to if you can build out stories and pain points that solve for those personas then you'll be onto a winner we would love to hear your views about anytechtrial.com oh wow so actually i i was having a little look earlier this week and i do really love talking about the metaverse and ai and ar <laughs> Uh, you have a super cool little interactive chat box on your on your website. I love that. I think that's really cool. I think I might steal that idea for myself. Um, <laughs> and, and, and also, you know, it's a, a great place to find um, new software platforms that you want to try. You know, I've been having a look at collaboration tools for my team and there's one listed on your website. I'm going to go and check out. Um, and I mentioned before your notable talks, they're fantastic. You know, we need to always be leaning in and listening to other people to get new perspectives and, and cementing our own ideas as well. So yeah, really valuable stuff. Keep up the great work. See, you are a chief marketing officer. You've been into marketing industry for such a long time and marketing industry demands you to be on your toes the entire time. Oh, yeah. And this this round also will demand the same from you as we step into the rapid fire round this is my personally my favorite round and your answers should be quick like fire and really okay. rapid okay I'm all right are yeah. you ready emily i'm ready yes all right be quick emily because i have interviewed so many people and they take a lot of time so i don't want you okay. to take a lot I'm on it. All right, all right. Here we start. Favorite holiday destination? Oh, uh, Florence. Favorite quote? Um, the best measurement is not segment, but it's the tribe. Marty Numier, the brand mm -hmm. flip. One thing you can tell your younger self? Uh, believe in yourself. Wow. Preferred business intelligence tool? Um, HubSpot. One word that comes to your mind about OTT platform? Um, episodic. Paris? Uh, baguette. Yourself? Uh, ooh, I don't like that one. Um, <laughs> crazy. Learning, learning. Am I? Oh, learning. Oh, gosh. Um, mm, reading. Preferred team communication software? HubSpot. Favorite marketing automation software? Ooh, Marketo. One quality you expect from everyone? Kindness. Wow, that's actually that's needed a lot right now in the world with everything we are going through, Emily. All right, Emily, we end your interview here. It was, it you really had some insightful answers and some beautiful advices from your key experience. I could really tell that you you really love your work because that's how uh, the clear and transparent your answers were in terms of your energy. Yeah. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Emily. And thank you, Notable Talks, for hiring me as your anchor. <laughs> and you are watching Notable Talks by Anytech Trials. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.